My name is uh, Jonathan Thomas, and uh, over the next 15, 20 minutes, um, I've got the pleasure of uh, interviewing two gentlemen. I'll introduce them in a moment. But just to give you the heads up, uh, when you walk through the room behind the black curtain, um, there are some stands, and they are great. They're well worth going to. Uh, let me prove it to you. I've had a pen. I've had a mug. I've had a magazine with an article I wrote in it. Um, and I've had more leaflets. Uh, genuinely, those stalls are well worth going uh, and looking at. There's some great uh, organisations there that are really trying to help us uh, grow as churches and to reach out in lots of different ways. So please, uh, this afternoon, take some time, go to the stands, pick up the literature, talk to the guys and the women who are serving there. Um, they're there, they've paid to come to serve you. Um, so please make the most of those uh, opportunities. Well, look, let me pray and we'll get going. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for what we've heard already today. Father, we thank you that our hearts have been warmed. Father, we thank you that we have been challenged and encouraged to rest and to follow the lead of your spirit, to see the Lord Jesus in all of his beauty. And we pray now that as we speak together, Father, that you would encourage and challenge us, we pray, in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Well, let me uh, introduce our uh, two guests. Uh, firstly, uh, we've got uh, Julian Richards. Uh, Julian is from Swansea. Uh, Julian, do you want to just tell us a little bit um, about who you are? That's an easy who question. Who I am or what I do, or both. Well, I'm, I'm Julian. Um, I'm married to Sarah. We have three children, Matthew, uh, Rachel, and Chloe. Uh, they all love the Lord. They're all serving God in their different ways, which we're very thrilled about. Um, it had more to do with their mother than anything to do with me. Um, and um, we, uh, Sarah and I, uh, lead Cornerstone Church, which we started back in 1991 with five young people, an unemployed couple, and 35 pounds. Uh, and uh, some 25, 27 years later, or whatever it is now, um, we have a, um, a growing congregation and, and two venues, and we serve our community, and uh, we love what we do. That's great. Well, thank you for coming in and sharing with us. We'll hear a bit more about that work. And then we've got uh, Peter Milsom. Uh, Peter, would you just like to uh, explain to folk uh, who you are as well? Yes, uh, I'm Peter. I grew up in Cardiff and then uh, ministered for 20 years in North Wales, in Deeside. And then just down the road here in Malpas Road for uh, just over four years before I became director of UFM Worldwide, uh, an international mission agency. Uh, married with uh, six children, including two foster children. Uh, they've all grown up, uh, the youngest is getting married soon, and uh, a number of grandchildren as well. And uh, I'm presently a member of Emmanuel Baptist Church in uh, Newport, I'm also the chairman of the Associating Evangelical Churches of Wales, about 60 churches. That's great. Now, I want to start off by talking church planting. Both of you uh, have been involved in church planting over the years. Um, and what's exciting for me is uh, we've got two men here who have planted churches and they have grown um, and they've been sustained. And I think that's really uh, helpful for us. Uh, Julian in Swansea, uh, Peter up in Deeside and Bala, uh, if that's right. Um, and so the question I have for you is, is firstly, um, what were the challenges and difficulties of church planting? Um, and then secondly, um, what have been the biggest encouragements for you in church planting? <laughs> oh, no, he's, he's pleading age now, and I can't uh, really defend against that. Uh, right, yes. Well, we, I was in a denominational church, and we'd seen real encouragements. But I sensed that that denomination was not my long-term spiritual home. So we, I resigned quietly and uh, took a job as a full-time job as a head of RE on the Wirral. And we started with just my wife and myself and our three children. Fortunately, the congregation remained united. Uh, <laughs> and they all kept attending. Uh, and we started holding meetings. And uh, within a few months, people began to join us, some Christians in the area. We received our first 16 members in the July. And uh, after about three and a half years, I came back into full-time ministry. Deeside was at that time a centre of unemployment. Uh, Shot and Steelworks closed. We began in 1975. Shot and Steelworks closed in 1978. Everyone moved out rather than moved in. But the Lord blessed us. We saw people converted. And uh, that got, meant that the church was really united. Many of the people, it was their first church. And uh, therefore, it was a place where they grew up understanding what we did. 
And uh, so that was really encouraging. I was there 20 years. And, and about 1981, I got involved in a small work in Bala. Just a few ladies who were witnessing. A town of 1,400 people. And we decided to encourage them. We held monthly meetings for 11 months. And more than 200 different local people attended at least one meeting from three ladies witnessing. Amazing. Uh, and then we constituted the church, and that church has continued uh, from since 1982 and uh, has its own pastor. Uh, and then we were also involved in the Bay Church in Cardiff. Margaret and I joined Ian Parry and Liz in the, uh, at the very beginning of the work there in Cardiff. And so I've seen planting in an industrial area in North Wales, in Deeside, in a, a very Welsh heartland town in Bala, a rural town, and then in the, the Bay area of Cardiff, which is really probably unique in Wales. So those are the situations I've worked in. And to me, one of the challenges, I won't take any more time, I said to John, if you answer in a long way, you don't have so many questions. Um, but to me, the challenge is the, not just the gathering of people, it's the consolidating of the church. Gathering people is one thing, but making them into an effective fellowship of working Christians and believers is really the challenge. If you know anything about rugby, they say it isn't your speed over the first 10 yards that matters, it's the second 10 if you're going to clear the cover defense. And to me, that is the challenge, building, consolidating the church, having people come through to leadership, and that is what enables the church to continue to witness uh, through the years. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, the challenges for us is when we started. We, like I said, we were, we were five young people, Sarah, myself, and, and this uh, lovely unemployed couple who, who came to pray. Yeah. And uh, we were working in a very socially deprived and uh, economically deprived area very high crime, had the highest car crime rate in, in Western Europe. Um, and, um, and people didn't want to go to church. Uh, they didn't want to know anything about Christianity. In other words, secularism had really, really bit, and it was biting hard. And so people wanted nothing to do about faith. It's the sort of time when if you're in a, in a, a, a social gathering and they say, well, what do you do? And you say you're a minister, people like, step back. You, that, it, was that, it, was that, it was that day. And if somebody did respond to the gospel, it was like quarrying that one person out of the world with your bleeding fingertips, you know, and one person would come to Christ and then they would stick for about three weeks and that would be it. And then we didn't have any money because we, we weren't supported by a, a, a denomination as such, you know. So it was 35 pound, living by faith, high, we got burgled 16 times. There, uh, the youngsters that we were working with were there either new Christians or, or being Christians maybe about a year or so. We didn't have any skills. We weren't professionals. We didn't have medics. We didn't have teachers. You know, we worked in burger bars and, 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 and you know, care homes and that type of thing. So it was really, really hard. And it, and it took, a, it took about a five to seven year period before we actually begin to get some traction in terms of winning people to the lost and developing this consolidated family culture of, of church. And people from other churches didn't want to join us because people say to me, well, I'd like to join your church, but I don't want my car stolen. Uh, so we didn't really attract other people. So it was basically a missional model of church. And in secular society back then in the 90s, it was hard, it was challenging, and it was discouraging. And you think to yourself sometimes, is this ever going to take off? Um, so that, that was some of the, the challenges. The starting place was difficult. And it's amazing, I mean, to see both churches grow. We've got members of my church, their uh, mother goes up to the church in Deeside and they've got new building on the go, you know, encouraging to see the church grow. Down in Swansea, I remember going to the church back in the 90s. It's like driving into a compound, literally. Um, and you were doing work with excluded kids. It was, it was just really inspiring. But now you've bought an old Aldi's and you've got Venue 2 down uh, in kind of Morriston. Um, so it's exciting to see the church is, is grow. Now, you've not only both been involved in church planting, but you've also both been involved nationally um, kind of with, with other church leaders and, and churches. Um, so, Peter, you've uh, done Affinity, been involved in Union when it was West and Brintirion, and before that, the New Testament. Um, you've been involved in uh, that, um, EMW and the ASW. Julian, you've, uh, you're involved in New Wine Cymru, um, and a lot of kind of, uh, you've done Gwaini, uh, you're on EA exec for about 15 years, I think. Did you take over from Kev Adams? Or? Uh, 
No, someone else. Ah, oh, yeah. So, so you've both then not only invested in the local church, but in kind of the church nationally. Um, when life is so busy <laughs> and ministry is so difficult, why invest time in that, Julian? Why did you do it? Well, <laughs> there's a will to win. And, and we need one another. And we can't do it on our own. And, you know, I have a passion for our nation. And uh, one stream, one church, one denomination, one particular grouping, I don't think has all the wisdom and the gifting and the talent uh, and the resource it needs to win a nation. I think as we find one another, um, the giftings and the anointings and the wisdom and all that God has given others, um, I, we can draw on and vice versa. And I think it's in the collective that God has given the wisdom. And it's in the body of Christ. The eye can't out say to the ear, I have no need of you. Well, that's true of a local church. I think it's true of a national church, a re- church. And there is only one church. Now, I highly value the individual local church. I'm a local church person. But in spirit, there's one Lord, one Christ, one church. And so we don't have to leave our denominations to find one another and find a partnership in spirit for the sake of the bigger picture. That's why I'm part of New Wine Cymru, and that's why I'm here today. And as regards EA, it's the same reason. The the wisdom in that board, when I got up to London, I I went up, you know, I was 15 years ago when I first went up, I thought, oh. I felt, I felt the Lord say, whisper into my own heart. He says, Julian, if you want to grow, hang around bigger people. And so I wanted to hang around bigger boys and girls, those who had more experience, more wisdom. And one reason, the reason I went on the board, was to, so I could grow. Um, the other reason is that uh, Wales needed representing in that particular thing. But I have come out the richer. But what I have learned is there is something in the collective, the Joseph many coat of colors, not one color, but in the many coat of colors, we come into a place of, of um, finding the wisdom that we need to build for the sake of a nation. That's great, thank you. And, and Peter, for yourself and as well, you've been involved in UFM with, with World Mission as well, I think, um, 37 countries, something like that, UFM. Um, again, why? why? Why spread yourself so thin in these things? Yeah, I, I think the, uh, the, what Julian was saying about unity is really important. Uh, it, it isn't something we've really got to yet. But, but Jesus' prayer in John 17 is that we might be one, that the world might believe. And our disunity is a complication to the message we preach. I took a Bible study in Bulgaria, and uh, there were people from the Orthodox Church and they loved to study the Bible, but then they said, if we left the Orthodox Church, which church should we go to? What's the difference? So I explained about how the Baptists used more water than the Presbyterians used. (laughs) Uh, That the Baptists had deacons and the Presbyterians had elders. A Little bit about Methodism and John Wesley. And you know, I said explaining it, I thought, is that all? Mm. Have we allowed those things, which we call our distinctives, to trump the gospel? which is our message for the world. And I think that, that is a conviction for me. Unless we are united, then uh, our testimony is affected. And it's a wonderful thing to go to visit different countries. I've done a bit, Lindsay's done a lot more. Uh, you just see that it's still true that all over the world the gospel is bearing fruit and growing. And we are so privileged in this country to have received, we have colleges, we have books, we have churches, we have trained leaders. And uh, it's not that we've got to go and do the work, because now people in the countries are doing the work, but we have something to give and to share. And I think in the local church sometimes, there's something selfish about the local churches, me and myself and us. And it enriches a church to look out and to get involved in some way in the wider work and to identify with others. And when we do that, um, not only does the world believe, but we are blessed and encouraged in that. So it's always been part of, of my ministry. I also believe that should happen at church level not just as individual leader level. Mm. One of the things that led me to be one of the ones involved in starting the ACW is that most of our ministers would go, say, to the minister's conference in Bala. And I thought, well, if a bomb dropped on the minister's conference in Bala, once the churches had attended the combined funeral, what would be left that tied us together? Because we knew each other, but our churches didn't. And I was convinced that churches needed to be committed to each other as well as leaders in order to further the work of the gospel. Thank you so much. Now, 
It's, it's great. I think Wales Leadership Forum, that's what we're trying to achieve here, is bring churches together um, across streams in Wales um, so that we can grow together, serve one another. Um, very often, you know, when I saw the list who I was interviewing, I thought, well, I, I know you both individually. Um, this is going to be great to have you on, on, on kind of a front together, an interview, because often in our constituencies, we don't know what's happening elsewhere. Um, and God is at work, and we're not seeing it. Um, and that's a shame. <laughs> um, takes away the joy um, of being a Christian. But let me ask you one last question. I think I've got time. I'm not going to be booed off quite yet. You're both men of uh, wisdom. That, that is your white hair. Um, <laughs> by God's grace, churches that are prevailing, going on. Here's my last question for you. How, how do we keep going? How do you keep going in ministry in the faith? One thing you can share, how do we keep going in the Lord? Well, it's grace, isn't it? I mean, the grace of God keeps us going. He is amazing. I remember in a conference meeting when we'd been going a number of years and it was hard. And there was, it was all only faith that, were, that kept you going and, and, and the grace of God that he called you. And um, I just remember in tears thanking God for the group, that pioneering group, that was still with us seven years down the road when it was still hard and there still wasn't a great deal of fruit. And so what, what caused them just to keep sacrificing, keep working, keep in relationship, keep, keep sacrificing, keep going for it, keep being faithful? What would cause a young person to give up the very best of their youth and their, their 20s to, to give so much time to this? It is the grace of God grace. So firstly, I think, you know, it's grace. I remember coming to one point, if I could share this one story, I remember after many years, I, I'd come to the end of my own ability to keep going, and I'm quite resilient, but we bought a new building. Uh, it, it cost us to get in sacrifice. We hadn't been able to find the finances to refurbish it, and people were beginning to leave again, and they were leaving and I remember a good friend of mine, Phil Hills, in the city church in Swansea, had just done like his amazing thousand-seater extension. And uh, I was invited to the evening meeting, and so we went to Sarah, and I was in Bible college with Phil, and uh, we're very good friends. I was thrilled for him. So we, I got out of the car, and just as I got out of the car, uh, a dear old couple in our church who'd, 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 who were part of us, they came out with their luminous jackets on and they were car park stewards of this church and as we got out the car they said oh just letting you know we're leaving you and we're joining this church and and the the meeting and the gathering the celebration was absolutely fantastic but it just accentuated my struggle and our struggle in pioneering and our fact that on the surface things it felt as if we weren't getting anywhere and and yet Others around us obviously were far more anointed and far more gifted and doing brilliantly well. And I remember walking out of it and I said to my wife, Sarah, Sarah, I, I don't think I can carry on anymore. It is like coming to the end of your human ability to keep going. And I fell and fell and fell. I felt like I was falling. I hit this rock. I smacked. You know, you know when it says you hit rock bottom? I hit rock bottom. But I found that rock that I hit was two things. Christ. Jesus is real. Christ is true. Christ. I hit Christ. And the second thing I hit was a calling. Jesus is real, and he had called me to build this church. And on those two truths, on Christ and calling, I picked myself up on my weak knees and carried on. And funnily enough, it was from that point we began to begin to see some turning and growth and traction in the ministry. And, it, and we began to, I wouldn't call it breakthrough, I would call it development mm -hmm. and fruitfulness. And, and that brought us to where we are today. Mm -hmm. So that's my story. That's brilliant. Thank you very much. Yes, I, I'd echo what you were saying about grace. Grace in this sense for me, um, grace that overcomes our weakness and our failure. Um, if God keeps us in the ministry, it's because of his grace. Not only the times when we want to give up, but the times when the devil comes to us and says, you've, not go, you've got no right 
to be involved in this work because you have failed again and again. And it's the reality of that grace that actually keeps us going. Um, when Satan tempts us to despair and tells us of the guilt within, up would we look and see him there who made an end of all our sin. The other thing is a, a conviction that I want to pass on to the next generation something that they can work with. I want to pass on something that is not running out and getting tired, but something that is going and which they can be committed to. And one of the big things for me today in ACW, it has been in UFM too, is to come alongside others. It's lovely to see a younger generation of people coming, I've seen it in the mission, I've seen it in the churches, new pastors, young pastors coming, making the sort of commitment that Julian talked about. And to say, what can I do to encourage and to help them? We've got 25 churches through the South Wales Valleys, mainly small churches, mainly elderly, but godly men, totally committed, uh, living in the community amongst the people, preaching the gospel, reaching out in all kinds of ways. And uh, I want them to be encouraged. I want to stand alongside them so that when better days come, there'll be gospel lights shining in those communities. And uh, by working together as a group of churches, we can seek to help and to encourage one another. So it's that dual thing that the Lord keeps me going. And I want in my time, if I can, to, to help and encourage others. Great. Thank you very much, Jens. Let me pray. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that the Lord Jesus says that he will build his church and the gates of hell will not prevail. Father, we thank you for grace. We thank you that you keep us, that you sustain us. And Father, our heart's desire is to see your church growing and Father, for the next generation to take on the baton of the gospel and for your church to flourish in this land. Father, we thank you that it is good and pleasant when brothers and sisters dwell together in unity. We thank you for this time that we've just had. Father, we pray that you'd help us to see all that you are doing in this land. In the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's give these men a clap. Thank you very much.